another way of um, regulating reactions by use of regulating enzymes or allosteric enzymes is covalent modification of enzymes. The first one is the feedback mechanism. The second one is by the use of uh, fertilitic enzymes. The third one is by modification of enzymes by altering on the functional groups. Should they should use the functional groups uh, in a particular amino acid in the enzyme structure. So we have sequence of amino acid, remember, in our uh, enzyme structure, or enzyme structure or protein structure, and it's made up of amino acid. Once one of the amino acids is changed or altered, now it's functional groups, it's the structure or some of the structure of the amino acids or a particular amino acid in the sequence, in the amino acid sequence of your enzymes, once being altered or modified, then it signals on change on the reaction uh, system. So the most commonly encountered type of covalent modification involves the process by which a phosphate group is added to or removed from an enzyme. So usually, uh, you had an example before you know, where phosphate group is included in the reaction. So what is a phosphate? It's PO43 minus, once you see that one, in one of the reactions, it's actually one of the functional groups or group of atoms it's being added to or removed in the enzyme structure. So the source of the added phosphate group is often an ATP molecule. ATP is how uh, you call this one, that this one is an adenosine triphosphate. And this is our source, often source of phosphate molecules. So the process of addition of phosphate group to the enzyme is called phosphorylation, and the removal of the phosphate group is called dephosphorylation. So once you add phosphate to our enzyme, you call that one as phosphorylation, and the reverse is the Phosphorylation. So this is an on and off process. Once you phosphorylate an enzyme and dephosphorylate the enzyme, it's an on and off switch for the enzyme. And it signals, for instance, some enzymes, the active form is turned, when it's turned on, it is phosphorylated version of the enzyme. Sometimes so there are enzymes when there is a phosphate group added to the enzyme, it means it is on the active site, but once the phosphate group is being removed, then the enzyme is in the active form. So, so, so there. So again, there are three means of three means of regulating enzymes. The three we have already discussed. No? So. Want to talk covalent modification of enzymes? So again, you have the phosphate group. There are uses of enzymes in the medicine. So once some enzymes, the presence of enzymes over the other is up to the can be used to diagnose certain disease. So for example, there is some enzymes that would uh, signal that would be present in blood can diagnose some certain diseases, and that's why we have some blood tests, no? Blood tests can actually, uh, one way of detecting some enzymes, there is a particular enzyme that they would actually uh, check, no? Whether you have some kind of disease or not. And enzymes, since it catalyzes reactions, no, it can also be used to treat disease. Uh, for example, the use of tissue plasminogen uh, activate, activator. We also have a clinical uh, laboratory chemical analysis, it's the test used for the measurement of urea in blood. So, Marcia, instead of checking on urea, instead we're looking on a certain uh, enzyme you know, in a laboratory analysis to check for the presence of our urea. So again, it's still being used to diagnose certain diseases, whether you have high urea, for example, it's just an example for a lot of substances. So for example, instead of looking at a particular uh, product or substance in the blood, instead we're looking at a particular enzyme. So again, it's, be, it's used for chemical analysis. The presence of one enzyme 
could signal on the production of a particular product. So again, for that, it's still the same as using the enzyme to diagnose certain diseases. So all the blood serum contains many enzymes. Some enzymes are not normally found in the blood, but are produced only inside the cells of certain organs and tissues. But they use well, of course, in the blood. So the appearance of these enzymes in the blood often indicates that there is tissue damage in an organ and that cellular contents are spilling out or leaking into the bloodstream. So of course, you have your enzymes usually in the cells of some organs. You have organs like you have tissues, the organs are made up of tissues and tissues are made up of cells. So you have your enzymes inside the cells of our particular organs and tissues. And if those particular enzymes, those enzymes, of course, you've learned would catalyze particular reaction. If those some kind of enzymes would slip or leak outside of that particular cell or outside of that particular uh, tissues and organ cells from the tissues and organs that and then it would go into the blood, then it indicates the presence of some kind of disease. No, I will not have control into the cell. So enzymes can be used as treatment of disease, I have already mentioned. So for example, uh, a recent advance in treating heart attacks is the use of tissue plasminogen activator. It uh, activates the enzyme plasminogen. So on some minutes, yeah, when activated, this enzyme dissolves blood clots in the heart and often provides immediate relief. So sometimes when our body are in so much stress, for example, COVID, you know, it's just an example, but um, I'm not sure if the study is already, if, uh, it has been used as a treatment, but for heart attacks in particular, usual heart attacks, we have already mentioned that in the previous discussion, um, there are blood clots now in blood vessels. And it produces on, further reduces on the blood flow uh, of the blood into, the, into your heart. So then it will induce heart attack. But if there is a tissue plus minogen activator, you know, this tissue contains some kind of enzymes you know, that would catalyze on the declotting process, declotting, declot niya ang declot. So there's clotting, you no? Know, so it reverse, rather it reverse the process of the clotting in the blood vessels. And this one can be used to treat heart attacks. So I'm not sure if this one is also similarly used for our you know, mga COVID, COVID patients. Uh, when we have our COVID patients, uh, there are reports and studies actually that uh, indicates that there are micro blood clots in the bloodstreams or some tissues and I think it, for that reason, ng a heart attack and all some parts of the body organs of the body for a COVID patient, no, kana sila there are reduced blood flow and sometimes a heart attack, sometimes all the but some body organs are being affected, and it is because of too much clotting in our system when we are being attacked by COVID, for instance, like particular virus or our body, our entire body, our defense system no, will be activated so much. So but they will be alarmed. And one of our defense mechanism is inflammation. No? Because it signals that we are being invaded. So there is inflammation and usually it's being associated with clotting because in the blood clotting process, no, it will prevent or try to kill on those uh, invaders in our body, in our system, in our body. That's the mechanism of our body. Our body will try to react by clotting, no, para mawala tong mga kanang invaders, foreign invaders of our system. When it's too much clotting, uh, ilan ta ng uban, no? And I don't know if they have already associated uh, this PPA reduce heart attack no? and it uh, prevents clotting. But there were reports before that there is too much micro blood clot for patients who had died because of COVID. Again, for reasons that it's not the COVID that actually kills on our cells and body organs. It's simply our body system that is being alarmed. And our defense mechanism, 
it defended tanan no attackers or foreign invaders by too much inflammation too much inflammation of the body in all body organs and all tissues too much clotting because na alarma na ang atong system and too often that would lead to the koan no a uh, failure of some body organs because of too much micro blood clot so dili siya kanang dagko nga clot so the same way that you can find git sa kanang mga kanang patients no who are having heart attacks clot gid na siya nga klaro or kanang mga aneurysm no nga clot gid nga klaro dagko nga clot but in reports of the covid patients micro blood clot lang ginagmay no but when too much micro blood clot actually can affect on the functions of the cells and sometimes as uh, some patients no cannot recover by too much uh, clotting in most organs and tissues that would lead to death no so hopefully pag we always uh, hope no that our system will be our body will be able to recover if there is uh, too much invasion from for example viruses like covid no and that's why some uh drugs it's being given to patients with with clots no it's they're given with mga anti-inflammatory drugs no and uh, anti-clotting drugs if uh dili pagit affected kayo ang mga organs particularly the heart the kidney and all other or the lungs no all other organs Anyway, so that is uh, what you call as, it's just a relevance, but I'm not sure if uh, TPA also is being used for COVID patients, but for those that are having, for example, high blood pressures uh, leading to, prone to having heart attack, kaya na yung mga clotting, they use this kind of treatment no? to treat heart attack. They call the, they use the tissue postmedicine to be so another medical use for enzyme, again, as I've mentioned, is the chemical analysis. So for example, if the urea in the blood is converted to ammonia via the enzyme urease, the ammonia produced, which is easily measured because of an indicator of urea. This one is an indicator of urea. And so you use the uh, BUN test. It's a common clinical procedure in high levels of urea. Uh, indicate blood functions. So we are using this one, an enzyme, you know, to produce, to convert. You no. Know? So what did what do they do? In, so in the blood we have the urea, and we use an enzyme, particular enzyme, because in biological system this can be converted. You no. Know? by the same enzyme, but for a test, uh, we'll be using a particular enzyme to diagnose a particular uh, product or particular substance. I hope that you get what I mean. Uh, we don't use the enzyme uh, like high or that or low of that, but we simply use this one for a test, a particular enzyme that can also be found in biological system, but we use a particular enzyme for chemical tests to diagnose a particular substance, substance in the blood. So enzymes used in medical diagnosis. So for example, the alanine trans amino transferase it's normal activity, you have 3 to 17 uh, microliter. Yeah, these are all enzymes. No? So for this, it's an indicator of uh, hepatitis, acid phosphatase. It's also, it's usually they are in the serum, it's a blood. So it indicates uh, that some diseases. So prostate cancer, you have the acid phosphatase, liver or bone disease, alkaline phosphatase, heart attack. You have the ASD. Uh, they call this one is LDH, CPK, PHI. If you are into, if you have been into, if you have been blood tested before or your family members can see they have this uh, enzyme or indicators, CPK test, PHI, ASD. And these are 
indicators, no? the high level of this indicators of some kind of diseases. No? This is what we call as used for uh, clinical laboratory analysis because the high level of this would indicate on the some diseases. And of course, these are used for the production of to another substance in order to indicate on some kind of diseases. Okay, so that ends our session. We're 30 minutes earlier for the enzymes. Do you have any questions? Okay, so I'd like you to review on your lipids and enzymes. If you want to read more, uh, it's available. You have your reference material, main reference material. And I will upload a quiz before the exam. So your exam will be on 15, which is uh, Wednesday. Right there.